Hi everyone, this is Dr. James DeNicolantonio, author of The Salt Fix and The Mineral Fix, and today I wanted to talk about acid-base balance. One of the biggest questions that I get, and something that even I was confused about for a while, is does your diet actually affect the acid-base balance in your body? And just to sort of make this point uh, up front, it absolutely does. And I think part of the misconception with why we don't think that this occurs is because the body fights to keep the blood pH normal. But actually what ends up happening is we slowly go from about a pH of 7.4 to 7.43 when we're younger, and that slowly goes down to 7.35. And even at that point, you're technically normal, but you've probably had what's called low-grade metabolic acidosis for decades. So what I wanna cover in this video is which foods contribute to the acid load, which foods contribute to the alkalinity in the body, how the body buffers against acid, and sort of what you can do to make sure that you are not slowly becoming acidic. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. So essentially, most people don't believe that the body can become acidic because you can breathe out um, acid. Uh, how our bodies actually do this is they combine a hydrogen ion, which is the acid in your body, with the base in our body, which is a bicarbonate molecule to form something called carbonic acid. Now, we then produce water and CO2 and we breathe out the acid. The problem though with breathing out acid is that it depletes your bicarbonate levels. In other words, if you're not consuming foods that are going to then increase the depletion of bicarbonate that you just did to breathe out that acid, your body is slowly going to basically deplete its bicarbonate stores, its base stores. And then when it does that, there's damage to the skeletal muscle, the kidneys, and things like that. So it's not a free lunch to breathe out acid, so to speak. And there's other quote unquote acids that you cannot just breathe out, like sulfuric acid. Now when we say acids, they technically don't exist as an acid, they exist as an anion and a hydrogen cation or positively charged molecule. So we typically hear the word lactic acid. Uh, lactic acid does not exist in the body. It's a negatively charged lactate molecule with a positively charged hydrogen cation. And it's the hydrogen that's technically the acid. Technically, Acid is in a hydronium ion. It's H3O plus. So we know water is H2O plus, or, or excuse me, H2O. When you add a hydrogen cation to it, it becomes H3O plus, and that's literally how acid exists in the body. Now, base in the body mainly exists in two forms, bicarbonate, which can bind the acid, and citrate. One citrate molecule can actually bind three hydrogen uh, ions. So our base is bicarbonate and citrate and our acid is the hydronium ions, which is H3O+, but it's really, again, the, the hydrogen ion that's the acid in the body. So there are things beyond diet that contribute to the acid load of the body. I'll talk about some of that, but let's just stick to um, diet first. So the leading things that lead to a high acid load in our diet is the most acidic foods are processed cheeses, um, cheddar cheese, and Parmesan cheese. So really cheeses are the most acidic foods. After that is egg yolks. Um, but they, because we typically don't consume a large volume of egg yolks, it ends up not being the main contributor of dietary acid and sort of similar with cheese unless people consume a good amount of cheese. After that comes the animal foods um, that are uh, somewhat high in acid. I would say after Parmesan cheese, which is the most acidic food, you have your hard cheeses and processed cheeses, your egg yolks, and then you have muscle meat. After muscle meat are your grains, and then you get into um, the basic foods, which have a, what's called a negative potential renal acid load. So that would be your fruits and vegetables. Um, really, the foods that are going to contribute a good amount to your, your alkalinity are things like potatoes, um, things like raisins, dates, plums, and spinach. Those are very, very alkaline. There are a lot of fruits and vegetables too, like berries and things like that, that are somewhat alkaline, but not nearly as much as things like dates, raisins, spinach. Um, to give you an example, 
three and a half ounces of spinach will cancel out the acid load of about seven ounces of meat. So it's about twice, uh, two to one, cancel, canceling the acid load. Now, most people in the United States actually have what's called low-grade metabolic acidosis. In other words, the pH in the blood is normal. It's between you know, 7.35 and 7 point, let's say, 4.2. Um, but they actually have low-grade metabolic acidosis, meaning the bicarbonate stores in the body are depleted. And so that's a problem that can lead to numerous issues, particularly breakdown of bone, skeletal muscle, connective tissue, even insulin resistance when you have too much acid in the interstitial fluid. So part of the reason why we don't think that low-grade metabolic acidosis is a problem is because doctors don't test for it. They simply look for acidemia or acid in the blood. They're not looking for acid in the body. Our body is much better at buffering acid in the blood because it has certain proteins that can do that, like hemoglobin and albumin. Whereas in the interstitial fluid and within the cell, our body is not nearly as good as buffer, at buffering acid. So you can have a normal a pH in the blood and you can be acidic in the interstitial fluid, which is the fluid that surrounds our tissues, and you can be acidic in the cell. So that's a key factor that we need to understand. Now, the other part of the problem with why this is most people in the Western world have what's called low-grade metabolic acidosis is because of our diet and also, again, how we get rid of acid. So most people's diets are high in things like um, cheeses and grains and meat compared to fruits and vegetables. Now, you actually don't have to consume fruits and vegetables to become more alkaline and to sort of uh, help with low-grade metabolic acidosis. You can consume bicarbonate mineral water, so you can consume certain supplements like sodium citrate, potassium citrate. You have to be a little careful with potassium citrate around the dose and if you have kidney issues. Um, but there are supplements, the citrates, even magnesium citrate, can contribute to um, the alkalinity of the body. And so I'll cover some protocols on how to do this if you're more of like an animal-based or carnivore person and you don't want to consume fruits and vegetables to bring um, the acid load down. So essentially what ends up happening is the reason why low-grade metabolic acidosis, again, is so common is not just because of the foods we select, but the limited capacity of the kidneys to actually excrete acid before there is some retention of that acid. So there were actually balance studies done in the 1960s by Jack Lennon and his group that really showcased this very nicely, that for a normal person with normal kidney function, once you start excreting anywhere between about 40 to 70 milli equivalents of acid for a normal sized adult, around 70 kilogram adult, you start retaining about one milli equivalent of acid for every two and a half milli equivalents above that threshold. Now, most uh, people in the Western world are consuming a diet that contributes about 50 to 100 milli equivalents of acid. So it's a, basically they're positive in the acid space when it comes to their diet. And so again, if you're anywhere from 40 to 70, you will actually start retaining some of that acid uh, on the order of about one milli equivalent for every two and a half milli equivalents above 40 to 70 milli equivalents of dietary acid that's being produced. So therein lies the problem that the kidneys have a tremendous capacity to excrete uh, acid. It can excrete over 100 milli equivalents of acid. The problem is, is you are going to retain some of that, and that's the key. And as your kidney function goes down as you age, you actually start retaining more acid. Now, once it's retained, typically what happens is the body tries to breathe it out. But that, again, depletes the bicarbonate levels. And then what ends up happening is that the body will start breaking down bone. And this has been proven in balanced studies when they give people uh, a diet that is high in acid. Um, a lot of calcium starts spilling out in the urine, which can only be coming from the bone, from the quantities that are actually coming out. So this is a problem. And what's interesting is the blood pH will stay normal typically, but the bicarbonate level in the blood will, will drop. And even sometimes the bicarbonate level won't go below normal. It'll go suboptimal. So there's a, so this is why low grade metabolic acidosis isn't picked up very well is because it, the body's pH and the body's bicarbonate levels go suboptimal, but usually not below normal unless 
the acid the acidosis is extreme. So therein lies the problem. Now, what can what can you do to sort of make sure that you don't have low grade metabolic acidosis? Well, you can make sure that your serum bicarbonate is at least 27 milliequivalents um, per liter. Uh, typically, 27 to 32 is is an optimal range. Now. Before exercise, there's something called peak alkalosis, and this gets to my second point. People always ask me, well, can you actually make the body alkaline? And yes, you can. You can boost the uh, blood bicarbonate level by simply taking things like sodium bicarbonate supplements, and a lot of people do that, or sodium citrate prior to exercise to boost the blood bicarbonate levels so people can exercise a lot longer because a buildup of acid in the cell ends up leading to muscle fatigue and things like that. So we've known in the sports realm that buffering acid leads to a lot of increases in performance, but we've never really translated that to a day-to-day -day dietary selection and what's going on um, prolonged in the body. So what ends up happening is we, we really optimally want to be excreting a net acid excretion of zero. We don't want to be dumping acid because what ends up happening is the kidneys have to form ammonia, which needs a glutamine in order to form the ammonia. And we take the glutamine from our skeletal muscle and our connective tissue. So you actually have to break down skeletal muscle and connective tissue in order to excrete acid out of the kidney. Now, if you lift weights, you are stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So you actually may not be losing muscle. You can be gaining muscle even in low grade metabolic acidosis, but you're not gonna be able to gain as much if you weren't in metabolic acidosis. So typically, metabolic acidosis puts you in an anti-anabolic state and a catabolic state. And you can, you can sort of offset that by lifting more weights. But if you want to gain more muscle, simply improving the acid load of your diet is going to do that. So again, the kidneys have to basically steal glutamine from skeletal muscle and connective tissue to form ammonia. And then the ammonia will combine with the acid, the um, hydrogen ion to form ammonium, NH4+. And then essentially um, that ammonia though, chronically elevated, can potentially damage the kidneys. And we, we definitely see this in animal studies. It's hard to say if this happens in humans, but we're pretty confident that it does because numerous studies have shown that if you take people um, with actual metabolic acidosis and you give them alkaline supplements like sodium bicarbonate, potassium bicarbonate, it improves kidney function, it improves bone health, it improves muscle strength. So from those studies, we're pretty certain that low-grade metabolic acidosis is harmful to the skeletal muscle, the connective tissue, the bone. And again, balanced studies have actually proven that bone is stripped when you have low-grade metabolic acidosis. So some of the things that I try to do is I do try to consume um, spinach to offset the acid load of the meat that I consume. I consume Gerald Steiner water, which is high in bicarbonate and low in sulfate because sulfate, sulfate isn't harmful per se. But if you start consuming a lot of sulfate, it is technically acidic um, because it has to pull positively charged ions with the negatively charged sulfate and that can steal calcium and magnesium. So if you're looking for sort of an alkaline water, it has nothing to do with the pH of water. A pH of nine water uh, is only going to contribute 0.01 milliequivalents of base. It's nothing, it's meaningless. It's the bicarbonate in the water that determines if it's actually going to make the body alkaline or not. The other way we get um, alkalinity is through fruits and vegetables, particularly really the things like malate and citrate, which ends up forming bicarbonate or the citrate can directly bind three hydrogen ions. So that's how we sort of buffer against the acid load of grains and animal foods is through fruits, vegetables, and bicarbonate mineral waters or supplements like sodium citrate, potassium citrate, maybe even a little magnesium citrate can also help buffer. So I hope this video helped and sort of it's one of the things that I think a lot of people don't really understand. And I, it took me a really long time and a lot of research to actually figure this out and how this worked. I had to go back to the 1960s and look at the balance studies. It was not an easy task. And that's why I really wanted to create this video to sort of set the record straight that what you consume definitely can affect the acid-base balance. And 
it is not, it's actually a huge issue, low grade metabolic acidosis. If you actually were to look at suboptimal levels of bicarbonate, I've talked to numerous carnivores and typically they have a serum bicarb of around 23, 24, which is basically the bicarbonate level of a 60 to 70 year old. So we really want to see bicarbonate levels around 27, 28 to be optimized. Um, but also there, if you have low urinary citrate or high urinary ammonium, that can also indicate low grade metabolic acidosis. So there's a lot of other key markers too that you can look for to see if you potentially have this issue. But um, if you don't have these uh, labs to look at, you can simply just make sure that you're buffering against the acid load of your diet.